Sarah Lance, aka White Canary, is a relentless positive force who faces up to her inner demons, overcomes them, and now helps others with theirs. Let's follow the many twists and turns of Sarah Lance's life through time and space, heaven and hell, and all points in between. Sarah, the daughter of Starling City Police Captain Quentin Lance, is a rebel. She meets her match in bad boy Oliver Queen and pursues him despite her sister, Laurel, being his official girlfriend. Oliver invites Sarah aboard the ill-fated yacht, The Queen's Gambit, and she accepts after a huge fight with her sister. Of course, she doesn't know that the yacht has been sabotaged by the sinister Malcolm Merlin, and she is swept out to sea, presumed dead. Her disappearance sends a shockwave through the Lance family. Quentin turns to drinking and drifts apart from his wife, Dinah. Laurel is conflicted because her boyfriend has been cheating on her with Sarah, and she can't reconcile her grief and anger. Dinah refuses to believe Sarah is dead and alienates her family with this belief. Sarah survives the explosion on the Queen's Gambit and is rescued by the crew of the ship, the Amazo. She is conscripted by Dr. Anthony Ivo to assist him in his experiments while he searches for Mirakuru, a serum that enhances strength, healing, and quickness. Faced with a decision to either help the twisted Dr. Ivo in his torturous experiments, or being made into a test subject herself, Sarah chooses survival. Oliver, who's been stranded on an island, is also rescued by the ship, and he's as surprised to see Sarah as she is to see him. They eventually team up to betray Ivo and return to Oliver's island prison of Leon Yu. When the Amazo sinks in a fight, Oliver thinks Sarah has been killed yet again. I saw you die. Not the first time that's happened, right? But she survives, and when she washes up on shore, she can't find Oliver. She's discovered by Nissa Al Ghul, who nurses her back to health and helps train her as a member of the League of Assassins. Sarah and Nissa become lovers during the several years' worth of training Sarah receives to become a killer. Sarah is drawn back to Starling City to make good on a promise to protect a troubled young woman named Sin. Of course, the League of Assassins isn't the kind of organization you can get a permission slip to leave. Once you're a member, you're a member for life. Dressed in a black mask and using a sonic device, Sarah beats up a bunch of bad guys and runs afoul of the Dollmaker, who kidnaps her family. Sarah kills the Dollmaker against Oliver's wishes, but nonetheless, Oliver and Sarah reconnect and rekindle their romance. Unfortunately, Sarah has a problem. The League wants her back. After a series of assassination attempts and failed kidnappings, Nyssa finally relents after Sarah tries to poison herself. Sarah joins Team Arrow, reconnects with her father, and continues her relationship with Oliver. After a while, the intensity of Oliver's vengeance-driven mission starts to wear Sarah down. She decides to leave town for a bit, but pops back in again just in time to help defeat Slade Wilson, aka Deathstroke, once and for all. After rejoining Nyssa and the League for a while, she returns to Starling City once again to confirm rumors of Malcolm Merlin's return, only to get riddled with arrows shot by Oliver's sister, Thea Queen who's being mind-controlled by Malcolm. This time around, death looks like it's going to be a lot more permanent, but a grief-stricken Laurel and Thea have other plans. They demand that Merlin, now head of the League, resurrect Sarah using the life-restoring waters of the Lazarus Pit. Of course, the problem with the pit is that it restores life to someone's body, but doesn't restore their soul. Supernatural expert John Constantine is called in to bring her soul back, and Sarah is finally whole again. Thank you, John. I owe you one. I believe I owed you one, mate. Sarah stays around for a while in the now-renamed Star City, but she is haunted by the lingering bloodthirstiness brought on by her Lazarus Pit experience. On the plus side, Laurel finally makes up with Sarah. Since she is now fighting crime as the Black Canary, Laurel dubs her little sister the White Canary. Be a hero in the light. Be the White Canary. When she goes back to Nyssa, her old lover tells her that she needs to find her own path. That path opens up when Rip Hunter, captain of the time and space traveling ship the Wave Rider, offers her a chance to save the world from Vandal Savage. Rip has his own agenda, of course, and the reason he picks this particular group of misfits is that if they're removed from the timeline, they aren't going to be missed. He can make them sacrificial pawns in his desperate attempt to save his family from being killed by Vandal Savage. At one point, Sarah gets time-stranded in 1958, so she makes her way back to the League of Assassins yet again. By the time rescue comes, she's firmly a part of the League again and has forgotten her past. 
Just as she's going to kill one of her former friends, she recalls her true place in the Legends. Torn between the League and the Legends, Guildmaster Ra's al Ghul makes the decision for her. He releases her. Though she's a killer, she wants to show mercy too much to be a real assassin. But your soul is divided by your ability to kill and your desire to show mercy. The team eventually learns that their every action is foreseen and manipulated by the Time Masters, Rip Hunter's former bosses. In a desperate attempt to escape the Time Masters' clutches, Sarah helps blow up the device that manipulates them. When she returns to Star City in the present day, her father tells her that Laurel has died. Sarah's grief-stricken by her loss, but Rip finally reveals that if he hadn't plucked her out of time when he did, Sarah would have died too. After reforming the team, the Legends of Tomorrow kill off Savage simultaneously in three different time periods, with Sarah snapping his neck in 1975. After the team's successes, Sarah decides to stay with the Legends to fulfill Laurel's dream of her becoming a hero in the light. In the middle of Season 2 of Legends of Tomorrow, the Earth is invaded by an alien species called the Dominators. This kicks off the first major crossover between Arrow, The Flash, Legends, and Supergirl. Sarah gets to meet Supergirl for the first time, but they don't have much time to get to know each other. Sarah and a few others are mind-controlled by the aliens to attack the Flash and the Arrow. Later, Sarah is teleported inside the Dominator's ship and becomes part of a dream scenario with Oliver and some of the other heroes. It's an insidious plan because it gives them all a fantasy of living a normal life apart from superheroics. You're lucky I'm not a trained assassin or anything. After the heroes' combined forces save the day, Oliver and Sarah share a moment, with Oliver saying that in retrospect, the Dominators gave them a gift. The back half of Season 2 of The Legends of Tomorrow sees the team chasing after the Spear of Destiny while battling against the Legion of Doom, which includes Malcolm Merlin, Damian Dark, and Eobard Thawne, who all want the Spear for their own purposes. At one point, Merlin captures Sarah and makes her an offer that's hard to refuse. In exchange for her giving him an amulet that helps him find the spear, he'll change the timeline and never interfere with the Queen's Gambit. Sarah will have the chance to live a normal life, and Laurel will still be alive. Sarah refuses. No, thank you. I was never meant for those things. And I know that now. Later, a mind-controlled Rip shoots Sarah in the stomach, nearly bringing about a fourth death for the White Canary, which, well, just keep watching. Luckily, she gets better. Eventually, the Legion gets the spear and changes reality. Dark turns Sarah into his personal assassin, but the rest of the Legends snap her back by way of a memory gun. Sarah eventually wields the spear and is given one last temptation, a movie night with Laurel. Even knowing that it isn't real, she is still tempted to undo everything that has damaged her. Laurel tells her everything led her to this moment, and the spear needs someone to help protect reality. Sarah returns reality to normal, depowers the spear, and the villains are defeated. The only problem with this happy ending is that as a result of using the spear, the legends inadvertently break time. Rip Hunter forms a new organization, the Time Bureau, and officially disbands the legends feeling that they only tend to make things worse. Sarah is reduced to working a boring retail job in Star City until Mick Rory calls her up after finding Julius Caesar on a beach. They get the legends back together, steal the Wave Rider from the Time Bureau, and start fixing time anachronisms. Sarah's new frenemy is Ava Sharp, Rip's top Time Bureau agent, and their arguing reveals a simmering mutual attraction. Sarah discovers that a demon named Malice is trying to manifest in this reality, and that he can only be stopped by accruing magical totems. Sarah is temporarily possessed by a death totem, but overcomes its influence. Sarah and Ava break up, but get back together after they both learn that Ava is a clone from the future. By the end of the season, Malice is able to manifest and seems like he's going to wreak havoc in this reality. The legends combine their powers through the amulets to create a creature of light a giant fuzzy toy named Bebo. Bebo wants cuddles! <laughs> Bebo takes Malice high up into the air and flattens him, creating a blue, heart-shaped mushroom cloud. Sarah and the gang take time out for the wedding of Barry Allen and Iris West. Sarah meets Alex Danvers, Kara Supergirl Danvers' sister, 
and it's lust at first sight. The two get drunk and fool around, although Sarah is clearly a bit more cavalier about the hookup than Alex is. How are you doing? I'm good. A little hungover, but I'll survive. How are you? How's your butt? Like many superhero weddings, this one is crashed by uninvited guests. In this case, Nazi soldiers led by Dark Arrow, Overgirl, and Prometheus. Sarah and Alex team up to defeat Prometheus, who is Tommy Merlin of Earth-X, an Earth where Nazis won World War II and continue to rule. After a big battle that the good guys lose, everyone is brought to Earth-X and taken prisoner. There, Sarah meets the Earth-X version of her dad, Quentin, who reveals that he killed the Earth-X version of Sarah after finding out that she was bisexual. Ready? Time! I hate fire. Luckily, Sarah and the gang get rescued by Leo Snart, the gay Earth-X doppelganger of Captain Cold, who is also a leader of the Freedom Fighters. They team up in order to return to Earth-1, and a huge battle ensues, where our heroes win the day. Unfortunately, Martin Stein dies in the crossover. The team attends his funeral before moving on, as Alex and Sarah both say their goodbyes. You heard that? Shut up. The fourth season of Legends of Tomorrow sees the team dealing with yet another mistake. In letting Malice emerge, all sorts of other magical creatures also came through at various points in time. The big bad this time is Neron, a lord of hell who has it out for John Constantine. While dealing with monsters and the mysterious machinations of a government conspiracy, Constantine alters time to rescue an old lover. The result is a series of disastrous timeline crashes where Sarah, Ava, and Gideon become the sirens of space-time, and all of the male legends get killed off. Another timeline sees Sarah and the gang get turned into the puppets of tomorrow, and they have a song for every occasion. Constantine eventually does the right thing and restores the timeline. Sarah and Ava get serious this season, though they have their ups and downs as they try to figure out how to make each other happy. When Constantine turns them into kids to help solve a case at a summer camp, it brings them closer. Eventually, the team manages to beat Neron after rescuing Ray Palmer from Hell, but the new boss of Hell and the end of reality as we know it both loom. Everything comes to a head for Sarah Lance in the epic Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. Sarah is front and center in the initial defense of Earth-38, but the true revelation is that she's one of the prophesied paragons who can help defeat the Anti-Monitor. Sarah is the paragon of destiny, as she proves again and again her willingness to accept her role and her fate against all temptation. Reuniting with Oliver one last time, she and the other Paragons thwart the Anti-Monitor at the dawn of time. When the multiverse is recreated by the Spectre, Sarah is one of just six beings to survive the old one with her memories fully intact. The team fights the Anti-Monitor one last time on the new Earth Prime. Sarah brings Mia Smoke from the future to her father Oliver's funeral. After fighting at her side during the crisis, she wants to let Mia have a chance to meet her mother Felicity and to say goodbye to the father she never had the chance to grow up with. In Season 5 of Legends of Tomorrow, the legends face off against Encores, history's greatest villains unleashed on Earth by Astra Logue, a woman with a vendetta against John Constantine. However, it turns out that Astra was manipulated by Atropos and Lachesis, two of the fates from Greek mythology, in another twist, one of the legends, Charlie, reveals that she's actually Clotho, the youngest fate. Millennia earlier, she hid the fate's loom because she wanted to give humanity free will. As the legends and the fates race to reclaim the pieces of the loom, Sarah battles Atropos on the set of CW Supernatural. Atropos revealed her true form to Sarah, which should have killed her, but instead just blinds her and gives Sarah the ability to see the future deaths of any person she touches. Knowing that Charlie is the best one to use the Loom of Fate, the legends fight off a zombie horde for as long as they can. Sarah gets overrun by zombies and dies, again, but this gives Charlie enough time to escape and rewrite time. Atropos and Lachesis rewrite reality so that people are slaves to the fates, but Charlie saves the legends by splitting them up and placing them in TV shows. What kind of Gromulans are you? The legends break out and Sarah kills Atropos. But while celebrating their victory at a punk show, Sarah is kidnapped by aliens, setting up next season's big conflict. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite superheroes are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.